Morning folks, welcome back again to Higher Chemistry. Um, if we were in the classroom, and we'll be back in the classroom once all this rubbish has sorted itself out, uh, we would have finished the first section and we'd be moving on to section two. Section one was all about uh, rates of reaction. It was about um, catalysts, how they work, the, mag the witchcraft behind catalysts. Um, we introduced a few new concepts to you. We introduced the fact that my glass of water here, made up of little water molecules, has actually got energy stored in those covalent bonds. Um, the name for that was enthalpy. That's the energy stored in the bonds of the molecules. We also threw another concept at you. The reason I've got an ice cube in my glass here is to cool it down. Uh, that's what we think of as cold in the real world, but actually what that really means is that the little H2O molecules are vibrating ever so slightly slower as I chill the glass of water down. Um, so the fact that temperature is actually just the kinetic energy, the motion of the molecules, that was a new concept as well. Moving on to section two, um, I'm going to cover three uh, of the learning outcomes. They are on uh, page, they start on page 45 of the SQA Bible. Um, don't worry about the fact we seem to be skipping around and there is there's a very logical reason that we tackle the subjects in this order. You'll see in the very near future. And uh, you're required to know three different patterns in our periodic table that we're so familiar with. You're required to know what the patterns are and why they are as they are. Um, I think I'll make three shorter videos, one for each one. So, just to avoid boring you. Um, the first one I think we're going to tackle today is the trend or pattern in the atomic radius. In other words, the size of the atoms. How does the size of the atoms change as you go across uh, a period, say from uh, lithium across to neon? Um, and also, start here with lithium, we'll have neon. And also, how does the size, the atomic radius change as you go from lithium down to the bottom of group one down to cesium, say? I'm not going to include francium before you shout at me from the back row, because francium is just so uh, uh, radioactive, it doesn't want to play the games at all. Um, if it was really in the classroom, I'd probably uh, get you to discuss this for a couple of minutes in your groups. See what you think the trends are going this way and this way. One of them is common sense, the other one's a bit counterintuitive. Um, we're not in the classroom. However, if you pause your video uh, and then have a think to yourself or have a talk out loud to yourself, whichever makes you feel better, for a minute or so, see if you can come up with the patterns or your hypothesis on the patterns anyway. We done? Excellent. Let's see if you're right or not. Um, let's go with the more obvious one here. As you go down from lithium down to cesium, then lithium's electrons, of course, are arranged as 2, 1. Then we're into, um, then we're down to sodium, which would be 2, 8, 1. Then we're down to potassium, 2, 8, 8, 1. I'm sure you're seeing the pattern here. Um, as you go down a period, a horizontal stripe on the periodic table, you're adding one extra layer of electrons each time. I don't know if you realise that or not before, that's actually what happens. Uh, and of course, as you're adding one extra layer of electrons, um, two things happen, actually, to explain the size of the, these atoms increasing. Um, the first thing that happens is that, yeah, you're adding an, another layer of electrons, and the second thing, uh, sounds like the stone from Star Trek, is called shielding. Um, all these intermediate layers act as a shield to the outer single electron here, which means that the electron sees a reduced nuclear charge effectively. Because the nucleus is positive, of course, and all these layers are negative, they act like a shield and they reduce the attraction between this outer electron and the nucleus, which means it can escape further and further away. <coughs> I do apologise, sorry. So that's the trend going downwards, which probably you managed to get anyway, no problem at all. Trend going across the way is slightly counterintuitive because it turns out, if I was to draw it approximately to scale, then if we start here, then we find ourselves getting ever so slightly smaller as we go across. Now, what's going on there? Why is that? Very simple reason for that. If we have a look at lithium, it's got three protons in the centre. And if we skip all the way across to neon, it will have ten protons in the centre. Uh, the layers of electrons for lithium are two, 
and then 1. And the layers of electrons for neon are 2 and 8. Now, 2 layers, 2 layers. So there's no extra shielding being added here. What there is extra though, is there's extra positive charge in the centre of the atom. So there's an increased nuclear charge. You go from 3 positives all the way up to 10 positives. No extra layers of electrons. That means these electrons get pulled in more and more as you go from this side across to this side. And the atoms shrink slightly as you go. Happy with that, folks? I'll probably call the video at that then. Um, so, learning outcome that we're tackling today is as you go down a period... Uh, sorry, I do apologise. As you go down a, a, a group, then the atoms become considerably larger because the outer electron... There's one extra layer of electrons and these intermediate layers act as a shield. So the outer electron sees less and less positive charge effectively as you go down, despite there being many more protons, ironically. So there's an increase in size as you go down, and there's a slight decrease in size as you go across. Because there are no extra layers of electrons, therefore no extra shielding, and you have an increased nuclear charge. There's more protons in the centre grabbing your electrons and crushing them in slightly. Thanks for listening.